Mike asked me that one time, what's your why? I'm like, why what? Why are you doing this? Well, I don't know. That is not an answer. Yeah. Because deep down inside, I have a why. I want my creativity to help somebody else. Hi, y'all. I'm Rhonda Draculis from RK3 Designs, and I am so excited to welcome you guys to the Pro Artisan Podcast. This is a space for artisan professionals to discuss matters of both business and the heart. All right. Well, today we know we're talking about finding your why. Yes, that's um, that sounds easy, but that is that's a that's a deep subject. We yeah. may get really deep here. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, and what sparked me wanting to chat about this with you was really our our drive recently uh, up to a little town in uh, called Linden, Texas. Way up northeast Texas. Yes, almost yeah. kind of near Arkansas, Louisiana. Yeah, kind not of too far. Yeah. yeah. The conversations that we had, you know, just getting to know you better, um, really just kind of sparked this conversation of why we do the things that we do. You know, why we own our businesses. Right. Why? What we, motivates us. Yeah, what motivates us. You know, what uh, what what we decide to spend our time on. Um Again, all these different things kind of kind of all play into, again, finding your why and why you do what you do. We should have had a recorder on those 12 hours of driving. <laughs> <laughs> We've solved the world's problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so my why. My why has changed um, over the course of building this business, which it should. My biggest why, which is obviously still there, is I needed an outlet to be creative, but just self-worth. And I know that kind of may sound a little, ugh, you know, self-worth. What does that mean? I've always been creative. I, I would see things and think, ah, I'm not going to pay for that. I can do it myself. So I've always had that ability to paint and to draw and to make things. And so when I did have my accident with, with the horses, uh, with my leg, I, uh, I kind of was limited in what I, you know, could do. And um, so I started painting and that was my outlet. That was, you know, it kind of made me, it gave me that, that extracurricular activity I guess I needed. Well, then people started really liking it. So it, it, there was a satisfaction I got that, you know, from, wow, people really like kind of what I do. And also I felt like I needed to contribute something to the family. I don't know why. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I, Kenny never said, oh, you need, you need to, you know, do this or contribute here. No one's ever made me feel like that. I just, inside of me, that's mm. how I felt. I felt like I needed to have a worth. Uh, I was worth something. I'm going to jump in real quick. Mm -hmm. I loved what you're just saying about just finding kind of that self-worth and self-actualization. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that I kind of think of it is, you know, if I won the lottery tomorrow and had, you know, millions of dollars that are going to take care of me for the rest of my life, you know, would I stop working or would I keep doing what I'm doing? You know, I wouldn't have to keep working. Right. Exactly. But would I want to keep doing something? Yeah. And, you know, for me, the answer is absolutely. Yeah. And and that's kind of what it is, because when, you know, when I when I started really getting into this business and really sinking a lot of money into it and sinking a lot of time into it and a lot of effort and a lot of my heart. There were nights when I uh, I cried. You know, I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, what have I done? What am I doing? Am I doing it right? Am I this? What, you know? And Kenny would look at me. He goes, why are you stressing? He goes, you don't have to do this. Hmm. This is not, I, I mean, I, I don't want to come across as, as, the wrong way. We did. We don't. We don't need the money that I make to live. In fact, my my this company is one hundred percent self contained. I guess, and I said that from the beginning. I will never let this business take away from our personal um, living expenses. I guess, and not everybody can do that. And I understand that. But this is what motivated me. To me, I felt like my self worth was building something that. I could build, I could make on my own, even though now Kenny is very much a part of it. Yeah. But the company, RK3 Designs, is standing on its own. And that—that that is what 
is very, very important to me. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's that self-worth coming out, you know, and um, I'm very passionate about this is my baby. You know, every little step and, you know, um, every little step is is a is a big step because I'm thinking this is my baby. You know, I'm kind of taking that that (laughs) leap of faith sometimes freaks me the hell out. I'll be honest with you. And um, I feel like every business is always like your very first child. Yeah. Because you know what you think, you know what to expect. Yeah. But new things are constantly being thrown at you. Right. You know, you're very protective of it. it that is it. It's you're really very hard protective. to let other people in yes. sometimes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. But that... we all want, like, the absolute best for it, obviously. We yeah. want it to grow. We want it to, uh, you know, find a life of its own. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I agree. So the question I have for you, I guess, is what are the things that you do in your business or through your business that really allow you to feel valuable and worthy and, and that you really feel are are worth worth doing a couple of things um first of all i am creative and i'm good at what i do uh and i'm not embarrassed to say that i don't think i'm boasting uh i am i am very good at what i do because i make it a priority to be good Uh, i practice Mm -hmm. um i master my skill you should be proud of that if you if you go if you have a god-given talent and there's a million people out there that have God-given talents. But if you don't take that talent and you perfect it, mm-hmm. if you are running a business, you, you you still have to perfect that. You still have to practice that. But you also have to have pride in that. Yeah. Because I do believe that the, that I have been given a talent by God. I really honestly believe that. But I work at it every day. Yeah. You, and you put in the work to develop it. Exactly. You exactly. You had that initial passion and that initial seed of talent and developed it and grew it into something much larger than where it started. Exactly. Which is really just an interest. Exactly. It really just starts at that, that yep. level of, hey, I'm interested in this more so than anything else. Right. Obviously, this wasn't even a goal, even a thought when we started the business, but it is now is to is to help other people find that passion usually they have the passion but to take that passion and okay let's create let's mm. let's let's do something with it because i have so many people that i have met that are like i know i can do this absolutely i know you can do this too but what they don't know is the little things that they need to do to get started and a lot of times honestly all they need is a pat on the back and all they need is to have someone in their corner saying, you can do this. You've got this. Yeah. And I want to be that person. I want to be that person that not only going to say, oh, you're just great. You know, I don't want to just toot their horn. I truly want to help because I'm going to tell you, if you know me, I'm going to tell you if it's ugly. I'm going to tell you if you need work. Uh, I'm not scared about that. But I'm also going to tell you when you do good. Uh, I coach a lot of rodeo kids. A lot of time when they're putting in the hours and they're putting in the practice and they go make a run and they make a good run, I'm the first one there telling them. But let me tell you something. If they don't put the time in and they, you know, they they say, oh, I want to do this, this and this, but they're not showing me that they truly have the commitment to do that. And then they go make a bad run. Nope. You won't get a out of boy out of me because you haven't put in what it takes to get that that attaboy, you know? And I think there's there's a lot of confusion sometimes where people expect um, kind of the wrong things from a coach or a mentor. Um, you know, and the, it, to me, it comes down to it's not loving them if we're not being honest with them. Yep. You know, to just tell somebody, oh, that's great, keep going, when it really is bad. Absolutely. That's not You're loving. not doing them a justice. Yeah, you're the only person who's in a position, if, if you're having that relationship with them, mm-hmm. To help them get better, right? And if you're you're brushing over the the, the obvious sugar sugar coating sugar coating it, it mm-hmm. it's not helping them get any better. Absolutely. If anything, it's perpetuating how bad they are because they think they're hitting the mark already. Oh yeah, absolutely. And 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 if you tell me when you walk into my class and you tell me this is what I want to accomplish, then I'm going to help you get that. But if you're not willing to work to get that. I can't want it more than you want it. Yeah. You know, if if I, I, I just like my tell my kids, 
I can't want you to win more than you want to win. Yeah. I can help you win, but I can't make you win. And I think kind of you started you started that sentence, I guess, with a really important part or really important key to this. And that's finding what their goals are. Exactly. Because it's not something that you want to project to them or to instill in them as much as it is finding out where, you know, what motivates them? What are their goals? What are their objectives? And then, you know, deciding, hey, can I help you achieve those or not? Absolutely. Because my goals for doing something and your goals are complete. They could be completely opposite. If you tell me your goals, I will really work hard to help you accomplish your goals. And through that, I may be accomplishing my goals. Yeah. And that's helping you. So I think in that and that comes back to goals. You have to have goals. You have to write them down. You have to think about them. They need to burn in your soul. All right. So let's let's dive into that just a little bit deeper. Um, you know, we're talking about goals. We're talking about finding your why. What would you or where would you encourage somebody to start? You know, maybe they don't know how to find their why, which leads to not knowing how to set goals. You know what? And I know it's a really like challenging question. Yeah, because I st- I, I'll be honest with you. I listen to podcasts all the time about this exact subject. Yeah. And it's something that, like I said, it changes. Um, I, I, I really didn't even. Mike asked me that one time. What's your why? I'm like, why what? Why are you doing this? Oh, I don't know. That is not an answer. Yeah. Because deep down inside, I have a why. And I guess my why is I want to to feel to feel like I'm giving. And it started off my why was kind of selfish. I just wanted to feel like I was felt good. I just wanted to feel like I was worthy, I guess. And as and also I wanted my family to be proud of me. You know, and that I know that's you know, you don't you don't do things for approval from other people. And it wasn't that I needed approval. It's just my going back to my self-worth. But then as my company grew, my business grew and my and my relationships grew, my why became helping other people because I saw how helping people and just talking to them started changing their lives, hmm. literally. And so my why now is I want my creativity to help somebody else. And that is a huge why. Because I tell you what, I can't even tell you the many hours I spend answering text, emails, phone calls for free. I'm not charging. But I know that that little bit of help, and there are people I don't even know. People are, you know, texting me or emailing me. I, these are people I've never met before. But there's a connection there. Yeah. And when they come back and they say, oh, my gosh, that little tip that I gave them, that was all they needed. Or that little attaboy, you can do this. That, you know, that that makes a huge difference to me. And my classes, when people come in and and uh, we're working on a piece and they see that aha moment, they're like, I had no idea I could create that. That is why I do what I do, mm-hmm. because that aha moment, that seeing them create something and that reaction that they get is man that's my self-worth yeah i mean because i felt like i have actually helped them achieve something you know i have somebody say i i i did this i i created this kitchen i had one one customer call me and say uh they were just almost in tears and she was like i could have never redone my kitchen And paid somebody to do that. But coming to your class, I learned these little things and I I brought it back and I was able to redo my kitchen by myself. Well, you know, her and her husband, I think, helped her and stuff. But she was just beside herself. And I was that (laughs) that I didn't help her do it. I mean, she was out of state. I I physically didn't help her do it. But I gave her support. You know, she called me during the process and I gave her that support and I walked her few, uh, you know, through a few things. And when she called me on the phone and she was beside herself, that just my chest swelled up so much. I was so proud of her. So things like that is that's my why now. Thinking from a viewer's perspective, you know, maybe they're struggling with what their why is. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, I'd love to try and speak on that a little bit as far as helping them develop their why, you know, how to start that journey of finding a why if they don't know what their why is. What's important to you? What's truly down in your heart important to you? Hmm. Is it, um, is it, is it money motivated? And that's fine. If, if, if your why is I'm trying to get my family out of debt, that's a fabulous why. That's a great why. And if that's what drives you and if that's what makes you tick, then that is a fantastic why. Yeah. So a couple things that come to mind, like hearing you say that, like finding your why often starts or I think it always starts with the journey of self-discovery. Absolutely. It starts yeah. with figuring out who you are, what motivates you, um, and really just being self-aware. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't you don't have to look outside of of yourself. Right. And I think that's really scary for a lot of people. You oh, know, yeah. I think a lot of times we look outside of ourselves and we hardly ever want to spend time with who we are deep down inside. Yeah, that's true. That is that is true. Um, sometimes when we dig deep down inside, it scares you because you're thinking, wow, I'm messed up. <laughs> yeah. No, but. Well, sometimes I, I don't think we like either who we are right. or we're scared that we're not going to like who we really are. Exactly. Or that we have to change. Hmm. How many people are scared to change? I don't like change. But as I'm growing, I know that I'm changing. I'm changing uh, what I watch on TV. I'm changing what I listen to on the radio. I'm changing um, who I want to be around. That's a big one. Yeah. I'm changing who I allow into my circle. Um, I'm I'm changing who I allow to make me feel how I feel about myself. Mm. It's really a matter of like all the different influences that are on your life, you know, and the different ways that people, you know, have a foothold in your in your thoughts, mm-hmm. you know, have a foothold in your heart. Right. And so, you know, once we have that idea of who we are and what motivates us. You know, a lot of times taking those external influences can either help develop us. It can help educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it allows us to continue to take those those steps. Absolutely. You know, I I go back all the time to this one saying that Mike said to me years ago. He said, you know, I never want to be the smartest person in the room. um, Because if I'm the very smartest person in the room, then. I don't have anything challenging my challenging me to be a better person. Yeah. I want to be around people that challenge me constantly. So I've started putting myself in challenging positions and listening to people that are a lot smarter than me. Um, listening to podcasts, listening to women that have done what I'm trying to achieve. And uh, it motivates me. And that, and that's what motive. I am motivated by people that push me. Some people may not, that might not motivate them, but yeah. I am motivated by people that challenge me. And again, it goes back to self-awareness. Yeah, You know absolutely. that that's what drives you forward. Right. And drives your success. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And if it doesn't, you know, if someone isn't motivated by, um, by that, then they need to continue to search for what, for what is motivates them. going to click with them. Absolutely. What works for me may not work for you. You know, so, um, and I tell that to some of the kids that I coach, I'm, and I'll be honest, I'm a hard ass and I do because I feel that anything worth doing is worth working hard for. You won't find somebody that works any harder than me now. And and honestly, I I have people saying, how do you give all this free information away to people? Aren't you afraid they're going to start a business and be better than you? No. I hope they start a business. I hope they challenge me to be better. No. But by God, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to work your behind off because <laughs> I work hard and I'm proud to say that I work hard. Yeah. So. Okay, guys, I hope you like this podcast. Uh, leave us some comments. Leave us some feedback, maybe questions, topics that you would like uh, us to talk about, uh, personal and business, either one. And uh, you can contact me through rk3designs.com. My email is on the website. And feel free to drop me a line. Stay tuned. There's going to be many more. So, bye. Bye.